pile. Second. He's going to come down to the yeah. pile. Second. They can hold it, eh? Can he stop the neutral? I think they may have done it. I think they may have done it with these final 20 seconds. Can they do it? View here, dancer back and get B almost immediately. Oh, There's the capture at A as well. Mutineers do just enough to hold it off. Now that the dust has settled on season one, there's one thing I can't get out of my head. Under our very noses, four very granular moments took place that decided what our league looks like today. They happened in a split second, and had they gone the other way, the league as we know it would look very different. We've seen half the battle, but the other half, the half that never happened and keeps replaying in my head. So we're going to build a simulation of that other half and explore what would happen if those things we now know as history tipped in the other direction. Can they clutch up and go big? Do not go anywhere. This is half the battle. Let's dive in. In this episode today, we're going to be looking at a semi-final match from the Paris Home Series. It's a battle between the New York Subliners and the Florida Mutineers. Up until this point, Florida had roster struggles throughout the year. But in their first event with Awakening, Florida won the Minnesota Home Series. The next week, they won the Paris Home Series. They looked unstoppable. My God, man. They have uh, taken they, over yeah. the Call of Duty League. After that, though, Florida went on a downward spiral, having a very disappointing finish towards the end of the year. They were so, so hot, but now three and five in their last eight matches. You're going cold at the wrong time. For the Subliners, they are coming off of two top four finishes with the addition of Matt. He is so good. He just been under it. This was supposed to be the event. They finally got it to work. In this episode, we are trying to explore a world where Florida doesn't win that second home series, forces adjustments within their team, and potentially lives up to the style of play they showed at Minnesota through the back half of the year. Florida came close to losing to the Subliners in the semifinals of the Paris home series, so it will be there where we will focus our attention. Let's take a look at the half you saw. All right, as we dive into this map number three, the first half really goes Florida's way. But it's the second half where it's looking good for New York. We're going to start at 3 minutes and 12 seconds. There are three one-on-ones that take place and New York wins all of them. First, Accuracy takes down Frosty from inside the warehouse. Then Zuma gets a kill on Awakening outside of sea. And lastly, Mac finds Havoc trying to get into the B site. Three players go down for Florida. But it's the response afterwards from New York which really hurts them. Great Hackney Yard domination teams, teams that were spawning inside of B, would fly forward towards A. But New York doesn't. Instead, they stay inside B and never get aggressive. But there is still an opportunity for New York to put this series away. Oh, this is going to come down to the final seconds. So we're going to see here, Mac is looking at Awakening through the wall. So let's go ahead and play this right now. Mac's going to turn around. I'm going to pause it once again. Mac is thinking, my teammates have this. There's two players here that Awakening has to deal with. The first one up is going to be a Temp. The second one is going to be Zuma. Let's continue the footage. And well, Awakening, he's going to win the first one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to win the second one-on-one. -on -one. And Mac has to back all the way up. Max going to be the next point of attack to get there. Can he stop the neutral? And I'm going to pause it right there at 31 seconds. You're thinking... Well, Mac got the kill. Why is this a big deal? Nobody is here to help Mac get this capture. If Mac was able to get that, the New York subliners would be in a three cap and potentially put the game away. But what happens instead? Let's play. Mac, he tries to secure it. He doesn't. Pharaoh backs on up. The lead continues to be for the Florida Mutineers. And what was almost a great comeback by the New York subliners is stopped by one play. It was Awakening, and he puts this into a 2-1 deficit. Mutineers do just enough to hold it off and extend this series. And the Florida Mutineers win the Paris home series. And Mutineers, wow, they get it done, but a tight one. Subliners nearly another crazy clutch. That's the half you saw. Now let's take a look at the half you didn't see. We're going to set up a simulation, but we're going to focus on the gameplay right now. It's 3.04 in the half. 
I talked about this being a big point for the New York subliners. Accuracy gets a kill. Zuma gets a kill. Mac gets a kill. That is three down for the Florida Mutineers in numbers advantage for the New York subliners. But what if the New York subliners went for A right away? The AB flag setup is the more powerful one. What would happen if they pushed that three versus two towards A? If they're able to get that AB setup, and heck, maybe Zuma does get another kill at C and they have a three cap. Let's set up another simulation. With 42 seconds left, I talk about Awakenings play at the A side. What would happen though, if Temp or Zuma gets that kill on Awakening? You can see with the positioning of the Florida Mutineers on the minimap, Attach is getting that C flag. If the New York subliners would have the A flag with Attach getting C, they would have a three cap and have another opportunity to win this map. The chances were there for the New York subliners. While these simulations show them winning them, instead what happens, the New York subliners get indecisive. They're not sure what home flag to make, the communication is sloppy, and the Florida Mutineers would end up winning this game. Florida unlocks success with those back-to-back -back victories, but those victories potentially gave them too much confidence. A loss to the subliners could possibly have been exactly what Florida needed. So let's envision what the league looks like if New York won this. For the New York subliners, they would go on to win the New York home series just a week or two later. This would give them back-to-back -back home series victories. But what happens if the New York subliners go back-to-back? -back? Maybe a better placings at COD Champs. They lost both matches there, similar to the Florida Mutineers. Both of these teams seem to have peaked at the wrong time. Remember, it's not just about how you win, it's also about when you win. This is the half we saw, but you can't help but think about the half that we didn't see.